all of you, my dear people. I greet you from Zagreb at the moment, um, and um, I have to say that I regret very, very much that I'm not in Nisa this year. I was looking enormously forward to be part of a cello academy there this time, and unfortunately, due to these terrible circumstances, it happened as it happened. Uh, but thanks to our Polish cello nights, the Polish cello quartet, we have opportunity to have this webinar and I'm very happy that uh, they asked me to tell something about how to improve your um, cellistical abilities, how to improve your cellistical thinking, playing, your technique and so on and so forth what you need to be a right cellist, right artist. So, what happened was, you see, I was thinking a lot. I was thinking what to talk about, you know? You have to talk quite a lot, so... Poof. How to have your hand completely relaxed here, not to press, how to rest your arm on the fingerboard, how to use different vibratos, depending on which kind of music you're playing. Uh, how to use your right hand, how to use the uh, bow speed, how to rest the weight of your arm on the, on the bow stick, how to feel that bow is actually just prolonging your arm and, and you are having this amazing ability to actually make this incredible touch, you know, direct touch on the instrument whether with the left hand or with the right hand, you know, with the left hand you touch immediately on the string and you can produce this extremely intimate sound, whether he's loud or crazy or melancholic or, or sad, but it's extremely intimate because it is a direct touch. The same with the right hand, you know, there is this hair and, and, and the string and they touch each other and there is this miraculous thing of producing the actual sound and all of these things, you know, and then I thought, my God, I mean, why to talk about that? You, you all know that, actually. You have fantastic teachers that are telling you all of these things. And, uh, you know, then you go to a master class and then you meet some other person, like my, some of my colleagues or myself, and then I tell you the same thing with with different words and due to fantastic parties that are usually there on master classes and long nights and, and fantastic atmosphere in general, all these words uh, come on a fertile ground and then suddenly, wow, there are miracles. You play beautiful like never before. Your ideas are opening and I don't know what else. You know, that's all normal procedure and we all went through that. And I thought, you know, I'll pass it this time about these kind of things to talk about. I would like to talk about actually honesty. us as players, uh, about honesty in general uh, in music. You see, I have a feeling, as you all do also probably, that our classical world is going into a certain type of a pattern, you know, like a fabric. There, are, oh, Every year are produced new amazing instrumentalists, uh, violinists, pianists, cellists, and um, it is always a sequence of, you know, these amazing stars which come and then they go. And then if you don't play like this, then ah, then it's not good because you didn't play 
I don't know, Bach uh, suite, exactly how now, I don't know, somebody said, and then you know, it's not good, and if you didn't play, I don't know, Schumann, Märchenbilder, or Fantasiestücke in a certain way, oh no, it's impossible, you didn't use these bowings, because this person, you know, it's a tradition that uses, and you didn't, and so on and so forth, so this all results in this sort of um, losing individuality pattern, which I find is uh, extremely dangerous uh, for our profession and not even a profession but for the whole humanity. See art and and uh, culture in, in this sense is actually essential for us as human beings to be different than all the other creatures that surround us uh, dogs cats lions etc you know what I mean so what I find extremely important is that um, all of you start to think about uh, how honest you really are while you perform. So let's say you have a piece of Beethoven, a Beethoven sonata, you know, and how do you approach that piece? Um, so what is very necessary is, and I learned that from, from my wonderful late teacher Bernard Greenhouse, what is necessary is to have, first of all, composer there and respect composer and his ideas. He wrote you many SMSs <laughs> there in the music from forte pianis, forzati, uh, accents, uh, crescendi, forte subito, piano subito, dolce, and so on and so forth. So first we have to respect that and to see what the person actually had in mind. After that, we come and then we look for our heart, what we feel, in a balance with our brain, with our intellect, meaning we have to understand that music, understand the style, understand messages of that composer and at the same time open our ears. You see, just the heart which I love very much when, when people have a lot of heart but just the heart doesn't do the job it has to be in balance with our intellect, with our brain uh, to find this balance between both maybe you can uh, also, if you think uh, notice that when you breathe in a one steady way you start to be calm inside and then your brain and heart start to think calmer they get in tune and then you can find your essence there's a little exercise about breathing and this is when you breathe in your stomach goes out when you breathe out your stomach goes in you can do it 
every morning or whenever you have time for a few minutes, a few seconds even. But the challenge is to try to do that while you actually practice. To be aware of your breathing because right breathing is bringing in a synergy your brain with your heart. When you these two elements have in balance and uh, let's call it in tune, then you will find your honesty also because you will start to feel differently. You will start to, at the same time, because the heart is involved and feelings are involved, you will start to think differently. You will immediately start to think about oh, which bowing I should use here in order to interpret this composer in the right way to show what he wanted to say, uh, which fingerings I'm going to use here in order to make it sound as you think or feel that this composer would like to hear it himself. You will start to think about this, what I said earlier, about how much weight to use on the bow, how much or which kind of bow speed you should use in certain phrasings or in certain passages and so on and so forth. So we are interpreters and uh, like in uh, acting, like actors, you know, they interpret uh, certain writers or certain plays, like you have Hamlet and then you have, I don't know, Brad Pitt as a Hamlet and uh, Orlando Bloom as a Hamlet and of course it's the same text but they will interpret that completely differently you know, how, how they feel it, how they uh, experience it the same is with us uh, players let's say cellist now because it's a cello webinar <laughs> so. and uh, you see I think this element of us um, involved in a um, very close uh, together work with the composer is extremely important um, and here comes to this moment of this honesty that we have to speak this what this particular person wrote with absolute absolute believing in this what we are saying with this I mean you know if there are certain traditions Oh, Bach, you have to play in this way. If you feel it a bit different, you have to respect the style, of course. I mean, it's without any question. In the 21st century, we know a lot about styles. I think that you have to follow your idea, your feeling, and then you will be convincing. Nobody is going to tell you, oh, look, you can't play like that, it's impossible. Well, maybe somebody will, but that is not your problem anymore. to be honest in this way that you stand behind this what you're doing you have to fight for our profession you have to fight for creativity for emotions for individuality for all this that is slowly by slowly taken away from us I think that um, my words will have some kind of an impact. This, 
I have decided to really talk from the heart and you see this is something which um, I get very emotional about because uh, I love you all uh, extremely you know all of you young musicians that are you see I get emotional that you start to to you know you have to start your lives you have to fight for your place and under the sound and you will all find it but you have to really stand behind that you have to stand behind your ideas and all other things are gonna fall in place because if you have a strong idea about how you want to talk this music then will also happen that your hands will work with you With my own students, I have very close uh, contact. I try to help them <laughs> with all my heart. You see in these corona times first thing what was cut off were concerts <laughs> so that shows a lot i think about how everything became just a sort of a pr thing and 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 lost its charms but we can get it back I wish you all the best, thank you for listening and um, I really hope to see you next year alive so I can hug you all and we can chat a bit more about all these issues, of course, with some very important technical exercises. Bye all, thank you very much. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.